Okay, welcome back everybody to Dwarf Fortress with Timo, episode 7, still on the first fortress, Cage Boot. As usual, I'm going to start with a, a little walk around the fortress to see where we are. For those of you who don't remember, we ended episode 6 with uh, the second siege of Cage Boot. We've got the little siege flag up the top left. We can see here we've got some uh, goblins ready to go. We've got some uh, bowmen and some crossbowmen. Um, going back to the fortress, also if you don't remember, we, we moved our beehives into what uh, used to be our duck pasture. We got a couple of geese in there, but the, uh, the ducks were slaughtered a couple episodes ago. We've got our dwarven um, marksman's uh, marks dwarf barracks up here. And it's got fortifications around the outside now. And we've got a uh, ceiling across the top. Uh, so that this is actually protected from all the wildlife that's out there. Uh, our fishery, I mean our, um, our fishing zone is, is enclosed. And we really have no other reason for people to go outside anymore. So we've, I've, I've not really been um, reclaiming anything. Um, I've uh, actually got the, the bridge moved back a little bit so that if you, if you have to get in and, and get to the trench, you have to go right past the dogs that are up here. Um, this got, got floored over. We actually floored over the, where we were going with the pond. This is permanently raised as well. Um, we can lower this if we have traders come in, but otherwise we're just going to leave it down. Um, as you enter, we kind of increase the path a little bit, so there's stairs back to get over to here. We've got some cage traps. Uh, we haven't moved these yet, and actually, I'm not going to touch it now because we've got the invasion coming, but I expect some more goblins to get caught. Um, it still paths right to the barracks after the, the cages. Uh, and then from the barracks, you have to come back up and get back to the fortress. We did, we were trying to put the bees in here. So you can see there's a couple of residual bees, uh, but they, they, you can't use the bees inside. So that's why they get moved back out. We started a farm. Is this built yet? No. So we started a farm building. Um, I'm hoping that this is going to be a higher quality because we got more mud here. Uh, we've yet to see that. We got to wait for that to get built to see if it's higher quality uh, than one that just had a little bit of mud over on this side. Uh, going down into the fortress, we got our workshop level. Um, we're up to three. We're, oh, we forgot to build. We need to build a, a farmer's workshop over here because we're going to do some gelding. Uh, I believe it's farming farmer. So for some reason at the farmer workshop is where you do gelding of animals. Uh, for those that don't know what gelding an animal means, it means taking your male animals and making it so they can't uh, breed anymore and get little animals. I do that with all male cats that enter my fortress immediately so I don't get uh, cat explosions and frames per second deaths. Ooh, lots of lots of masterwork silver hammers. Uh, with that many masterwork silver hammers, I think I actually can turn off that job. So I'll do that right now while I'm thinking about it. Uh, making some silver hammers. Where are you? Silver war hammer. All right, get rid of that. So I actually shouldn't have any weapons or armor being made now. And because I don't have... Yeah, I don't have too much of that being made, I'm actually going to come into the jobs as well while I'm thinking about it, the labors, and um, take off the, the weaponsmith, I'm going to let them do other stuff, and the armorsmith, I'm going to let them do other stuff. Oh, nice, a high master armorsmith. Two legendary weaponsmiths, that is good. All right. Uh, going down further from the workshops, uh, we do have to work on our our uh, dining hall a little better. Maybe I'll engrave that tonight. We'll see. But we've got all our food processing. We've got the the still and a cork. I mean a screw press to deal with the honey. We've got the kitchen, butchery, tannery, fishery. Um, I saw a format on how to build these that I liked really well. Uh, they kind of built the 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 kitchen as a node uh, that was kind of in the middle. Kind of swapped these two. 
and they had kind of the butchery and the fishery off to the side here kind of feeding into the the kitchen uh, so I might I might play with that a little bit and then they had a you know a separate stock pile for all the the inputs for for like the fishery and kind of like the raw materials on this side and the prepared materials on the other so I might do that um, it's not what I the way I've, I've been doing it is all of these things are kind of just feeding in and out of one stockpile that has everything that is also right next to the dining hall but the other way I don't know if it was any more efficient but it just kind of looked nicer um, and it logically made more sense but I don't know if it's any more or less efficient uh, we got our hospital got lots of traction beds actual beds uh, this used to be filled up quite a lot because we had just quite a while without a hospital but now we got the hospital up and running we've got some fresh water coming in uh, you can see here it doesn't say stagnant anywhere on there when I'm looking at the water uh, that's because I have the water connected all the way to a fresh water source uh, constantly being fed so even the water is not looking like it's sloshing around or anything because it's fully connected with no uh, blocks in it this will stay fresh water that's what you're gonna want for having a well um, otherwise if you just pump some water in here and then close it off like say I were to um, come over here and have closed this bridge and kept it separate this water would stagnate and then I would be getting stagnant water into my uh, hospital and that could actually cause some infections and that kind of stuff which you don't want uh, go down another level this is where I have all my bedrooms I think I'm up to a hundred right now and I'm working on 120. Uh, my pop is, is at 98 right now, so it's good that I'm trying to work ahead. Let me just make sure that I actually have all those rooms. Yes, I have all those rooms. So we'll work on to get to the 120. We'll probably get all the way up to the 140 tonight, if I were to guess. We do have one noble. Let me see if any other nobles popped up. We're probably, oh, he needs, this yellow means that he needs better of this kind of stuff. Um, so I need to improve the quality of what he has. I'm probably going to start with just engraving everything. Uh, and I can actually do that right now while I'm remembering. All right, so we will engrave all of that. And we'll see if that gets the quality there. If that doesn't do it, I can maybe put some statues in there to, to inch something over or maybe see if I can replace some low quality uh, thing in here. Like some of these are not masterwork. Like this throne is, is just a, a single slash. That's pretty low. So I might be able to, if I look at uh, furniture, uh, chairs, select material. We might have some masterwork. Uh, at the very least, we have some some higher quality thrones. So we we could find ways to improve the quality of that to to get it up to what he wants. Uh, this is where I got a lot of stone from. Let me actually see how we're doing on stone. Uh, we've got not that much stone, like none actually. Okay, so. While I'm here on this, I'm going to go ahead and just designate another batch of stone to be mined out. Um, eventually what I want to do for the, the frames per second uh, as well is these big areas that you mine out, you're going to want to just close these off or come in here to the traffics and put some restricted around it so that dwarves don't uh, get um, a lot of path in cues uh, calls into here. Just limited big areas where dwarves could walk um, helps you keep the game running smoothly. Uh, here's temples. So I got one temple to everybody and then three temples to the, the highest, um, the most populous um, religions or gods, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and build a couple more. There's something I want to actually check um, on this interface. So I remember when I was building these temples, some of the temple or the deity names showed up yellow. And I wasn't sure why, and I suspect it's because there's some people with unmet needs that are yellow um, for those deities. And if there's a unmet need, it shows up yellow on a... Let me see if I can actually show you that. So if I come to here, his unmet needs are all yellow. Okay, so pray to lure it is an unmet need here. Now if I, do I have a temple to lure it? I thought I did. Um, temple to lure it. So I don't know why you're not praying over here, but he has an unmet need to pray to lure it. And it's yellow means that it's more important to him than these other ones. So if I were to meet that need, he would be a lot happier than any of these other needs. Um, 
So some of these might have prey to a specific, like rash. I don't remember if rash is one of the ones that are here. We got Lorid, we got Onborn Nut, and we got Limar. So rash is not a specific one. And I don't know if, if he's going to be able to prey to rash here in this generic one, or if I'm going to need to make rash. Uh, but as I build one of these out, so I know I got at least one dwarf that has a yellow prey to rash. I can see if rash is one of the gods that shows up yellow under the temple. Uh, that's what I suspect it means. Uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of closed coffins on my mausoleum level. Uh, that just means that it's been a very violent time. If you're if you're coming to this series now, there it has not been easy going this whole time. All right, so making some more uh, coffins while I'm here uh, because I want to stay ahead of this. I don't really want to get behind. You can see. Um, I've got one slab because uh, somebody w went unburied and became a ghost and we had to get the get the slab to memorialize and get rid of the ghost so we did that a little while ago uh, we've been digging down a little bit farther I'll go ahead and get that another level um, queued up for that as well um, if you're new, I believe I've talked about it on this stream, but you can see how I'm doing this kind of spiraled uh, three wide ramps going down into the ground. Uh, the reason that I like to do that is one, it just kind of looks kind of nice, but two, it means that from this trade depot, trade depots, some merchants will show up with these large wagons that, that are three wide. It had, they carry a lot of stuff, and they can take a lot of stuff out there, out with them. It looks like the coding has been changed. It used to be that wagons used to show up right off the start. But it looks like I might have to get to a certain value level for merchants to, to think that they need that kind of storage to take stuff out. I haven't seen any yet in this game, so I'm, I'm waiting to see if I get more valuable, I get more people if I start seeing those wagons, or if... Tarn just took wagons out, and I'm just wasting my time with the three wide um, hallways. But the reason I put them there, the three wide all the way down, is that if I want to take and relocate really far underground, like maybe in a cavern or something like that, I can also move my trade depot way down there, and I've already built a path all the way down as deep as I go that those wagons can, can make it. Um, so it looks nice, and it's it's got some functionality too for planning for later. So, um, I have not, I used, I did define a burrow, but I haven't messed with it in a while. I've had it suspended because when I chose to move inside to kind of avoid the animals, I also just gave no reason, like I haven't, I haven't, uh, queued up any, cut down any more trees. I'm going to handle that, um, inside when I breach the cavern. I actually move my refuse pile inside. So I've got this, this large area here that I'm going to start dropping stuff, and it's at the top of my fortress, so I'm not putting it outside anymore. Um, and I'm going to see if I can, can kind of stay off the surface, don't give any reason for my dwarves to go out here, and see if that can avoid these, these agitated animals. If I go and look for, for others, um, let's see, I've got just four goblins right now, but I've got some agitated giant crows. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to stay away from them. The reason I've got so many dead dwarves right now is just a lot of agitation from the wildlife. All right, so we're going to unpause it, and we're going to see these goblins come. I don't know how many goblins we're going to get this time. I think I had about six last time. It uh, looks like I'm already at that six this time. And that might be about it. Is that all we got? Six goblins. So with these invasions, what usually happens is they will um, show up and start trying to invade. And if they lose about half their numbers for goblins, then they'll just flee. So there, oh, another thing I wanted to talk about is the pathing on these guys. I can talk about it as they're going. So what enemies will do when they're pathing is they're going to try to go towards your main dining hall. Um, so they're going to find the closest path for them to get there. And, and go straight to it. So they're actually coming across here because they're going to go down and in here. Um, and they're just trying to find the, the shortest path to get to my dining hall. And you see he entered my fortress. He's going to come through here and he's going to get trapped. Um, 
Oh, there's actually... He got caged in that spot because my um, uh, dwarves had reset that cage. And so now I'm getting like multiple um, cages in the same same spot. So I'm going to have to... It looks like you have to claim a cage after it gets trapped. So that's, that's strange. I, I hadn't seen that before. Um, we still got a siege. How many more goblins we got? Three or four already got captured. Uh, cage prisoner. We got we got four left to go. Uh, it looks like some dwarves are coming out here for some reason. Dwarven child, dwarven child. Oh, it's just the dwarven children. They don't know what they're doing. Snatcher, protect the children. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, eventually enough, these goblins will get captured. Or they might actually be outside fight in. Last time, uh, some of these goblins got in a fight with some uh, agitated giant deer and were, the remaining were killed off. It might be that some of them get in a fight with some, some of the giant or the agitated animals out there. Either way, let me see. We had four. We still have four. Let me see where these guys are. So they're over here. It looks like they're just walking slow. They might have heavier armor. Or they're just a little more cautious. Or they got in a fight with some, some animals out there and it, it delayed their, their approach to the to the fortress. But their buddies just went in a cage. I'm going to see if I can find a way to show you how to get some training on caged goblins this time. But I'm going to wait for this, this siege to go away for me to, to show you that. I also might repath this. I'm going to find a creative way to do that. But I might find a way to repath it that they actually go through the barracks first and then come to the cages. Because I don't really want to cage too many of these. I'd rather just fight them. Uh, but I'm not sure. And then use the cages as a backup if, if my, goth, my dwarves are overrun. But we'll see. I don't have to make that decision yet. Where, where did they go? Looks like they stopped somewhere. They're outside. Are they getting shot at? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what they're doing. Alright, now they're going. Uh, these dwarven children are just... <laughs> So my, my dwarven children are going to fight the goblins. That's, that's funny. Uh, they don't... They don't want to just let, let it be. Okay, so I guess I will... <sighs> troublesome, troublesome. Oh, who is fighting? Are they fighting each other? Is that the problem? They... Hold on. I might have dwarves fighting dwarves. This is the goblin. Sometimes dwarves can get in fights with each other. And I want to make sure that's not happening. But it, it looks like... They're... They're fighting. Looks like they're fighting the goblins. But I'm going to go ahead and select my my best squad. And I'm going to tell them to, to come kill these goblins. Because I'm getting some dwarves getting in fights with them. And I just want to limit the amount of dwarves that I lose for, for not a lot of reason. I think I might have to go ahead and, and use the burrow designations just to keep the dwarves out of this area because I think they're coming to to this area for some reason. I'm not sure why, but they, they seem to be showing up here. Cage trap. Who got caged? Uh, nobody. Afraid we might be in a no, not there. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is this is an Axe Lord fight. Um, to show you the kind of power that these these kinds of guys have, you can see that you know the the Axe Lord gets in a fight. He just he's just dodging bolts. So you know the the Goblin Crossman is shooting bolts at him, and he's just dodging it. Then he gets up to him, uh, hits him in the foot. Foot comes off. Uh, opens up an artery. Um, and then uh, so this is just one swing right here and it just like it takes off the foot it opens up an artery it tears apart the ankle and the muscle it, all of this is all part of one swing uh, then the goblin you know misses the axe sword a couple of times um, he he kicks I don't know why you're gonna kick the left foot again um, but shatters the ankle so and that and that foot he just cut off hit you know, kicked it and then shattered the bone with the kick. Um, then hits the crossbowman in the head, um, and it looks like you know it, it, it tore a tendon in the in the upper spine. So a neck hit almost probably severed the head with that hit. Um, hits in the lower arm. Artery's been opened. Uh, the the lower arm looks like. It pretty much just got torn off as well. So an arm is gone, a foot is gone. Hits the other foot. Uh, that foot is basically gone. So, you know, two feet gone and an arm gone. Uh, there was the left, which one was this? Left lower arm again. Uh, shattering some bones the second time in the elbow. Uh, hits in the neck again. The upper spine has been torn again. Uh, so it looks like at this point... Uh, then after that, I'm pretty sure that the goblin's pretty much done after that. I mean, they're attacking, but not really anything deadly. So, you know, just the difference between the axe lord attacking with his axe, and you saw, I read through kind of the combat on a dwarven child, I think, fighting a, a giant wolverine. So the, the child was punching, and the punch would, like, you know, bruise a muscle a little bit. I mean, there was that one punch right in the eye socket of a, of a giant wolverine that destroyed the eye, but for the most part, there wasn't serious damage. Whereas these axe lords are hit with the axes and parts are just flying off, cutting right through. Um, it is not taking very long. All right, so, okay, the siege is over. Uh, the goblins have either ran or I've got, I got three more caged goblins and the rest have ran. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, claim everything here and see if that'll move the cages um, into my uh, this the what is this called stockpile if I put the goblins in cages here then I'll show you how to install a goblin cage and then therefore how to use a goblin in a cage for training in your uh, in your barracks which is really helpful if you're if you're just getting started. You're you're trying to have your dwarves get some some training. The fastest way they can train is actually by fighting, not even by sparring. Actually fighting, and it even counts as a fight if you have a caged goblin, and you release it with no weapons, surrounded by eight dwarves, and they all beat it to death in an eight on a one. That still counts as combat training. So it's a really easy way to do it, and I'll show you how to do that. So it looks like I might be getting some of that all right let's see if I've got any uh, suspended jobs uh, tasks sometimes jobs get suspended while you've got combat going on but it looks like no yeah some dwarven children died it's kind of their fault they decided to go attack goblins I don't know why all right. Yeah, it looks like I am taking some of these goblins. So hopefully they'll show up here. We got a barn owl, a mongoose, a yak bull, and a dog up here. All right. Oh, speaking of dogs, let's see if there's any that need to be trained. So pet livestock, no, I don't need to be trained. All right, so what did I want to do this episode? We, we fended off the fight. 
I know that I'm going to want to, let me get rid of all this kind of stuff. I know that I'm going to want to get through um, showing you how to take a goblin out. Uh, but I think the big thing on my list is breaching a cavern. I think that's what we're going to do. So let me, let me get down here and make sure we keep going and work towards that goal. Uh, because that'd be kind of exciting. There's a lot to talk about with breaching a cavern, a lot of stuff to prepare with that. So we'll keep we'll keep digging down and see if we get to the cavern. Also, I just want to see what's here. Oh, okay, definitely. I also wanted to demo this. So we'll we'll demo it on this level just because I see some oh some hematite. That's iron. We're gonna get to steel. Okay, perfect. So I want to demo uh, this auto dig out the orbs and gem um, ore and gems. Uh, so auto mining. So I'm gonna do exploratory mining like I did before, but since I, why didn't that go? Uh, but since I have it on, uh, oh wait, do I got the wrong thing? Dig only or oh, that's not what I want. Dig, dig every tile. Oh. And then, and then auto mine. Okay, that's so. I just do this. Okay, and then I want to go back to all to do this. Okay, that's a little bit different than how I remember doing it before. It might just be a new interface. So there used to be a toggle you could turn on where, when you hit a node, you know what? It might have been a dwarf DF hack type option where it would do that. So it looks like what's going to happen is with these green thins, when the dwarves come here, they're going to do that and then dig out that entire node, which could or could not be bad based on, I wonder if there's a way to just designate a tile to leave alone. I don't know. I don't want them to destroy these ramps. So you know what? I, I'm going to remove that. I, I'll show it. Uh, I'll show it out here. If I hit some nodes, I'll show the auto over here. But I don't. I don't want to get where they destroy stuff. Like if this node somehow wraps around here and connects to here, then it'll kind of get rid of some of these ramps, and I really don't want to strand any of my dwarves down here. <clears throat> All right, it is going, right? Yeah, what's my frames per second? Up to 30, 32. We dropped down to 22 for a little while. I think last episode, um, as I talked about, if you if you slot too many um, smooth actions uh, and or engrave actions, your dwarves actually get really, oh, I'm going to take off some of this. This is going to be cutting down on what the dwarves are doing. I don't want this floor anymore because I've got the floors down below that I'm trying to do. <clears throat> uh, but I was going to say, if, if you've got too much designations for smooth, because I think I, I designated all of this to smooth, and then I also designated on this level both of these to smooth, and you see that it's all smooth now, but I think I dropped somewhere around like 15 to 20 uh, frames per second from doing all of that at the same time. And so that's just kind of what happens. You, if you, and we can actually, might be able to see it. Ooh, I actually got low frames per second on this floor too. That also happens is that when you're on a busy floor with a lot of stuff, your frames per second drop. All right, so we're gonna queue that up and then we're gonna come back down to the bottom. All right, so he, like, again, here's a risky. So if I were to show you auto mine a node on these, I think it'll path over to here and cut this. Um, so what I could do, what I could do is this. Since I know I want to save these ones, what I could do is, oh, not there. I need to save, so this ramp comes down here and they come here. So these three walls right here need to be saved and not mined out. Um, the rest don't matter. Um, everything else can be mined out, but these three need to not be mined out. So if I just cut around like this and then make sure I don't auto mine over those three, 
um, it's nothing bad will happen on this level. So then I can auto mine the rest of this stuff and show you what that's like. So that's what I'm going to do. Because if you if I start taking these away, it means that the the ramp uh, won't connect anymore. Um, it'll well actually I, c I could take these two sides away and these kind of become diagonal ramps, but I like to leave all three just to um, make sure that nothing um, tricky happens. And then on this level, these three are the the important ones. So I'm going to leave these three. Um, and in fact. You know, just to, to remind myself, I could just smooth those three. Uh, just to remember that I don't want to take them out. And then I'm going to show, go ahead and show this. And I thought this worked a little bit differently before. So if I go like this, that becomes green. They'll mine it, and not only will they mine it, but they'll, uh, they'll mine everything else that's connected to it as a node. Um, within the same kind of dirt structure. So like if I had only done these ones here, it wouldn't hop the the, the hallway here and start mining out these ones. Um, it would just do the ones that are in between the two hallways here. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of helpful. You don't have to come back and keep designated stuff. Uh, so you see like it did it and then three more popped up and then that one and another one popped up. Um, so that's it's just helpful for dealing with this um, mining specific uh, minerals. And the hematite, that I believe is an iron source, which I don't think I have on my smelt yet. So I do smelt tetrahedrite. So I'm going to add the smelt hematite. And as I did before, I'm going to do these in sets of five. I'm going to add a condition that uh, we have the ore and we have the coal. Both of these are going to be um, swapped to at least five. Four, at least five. Uh, so we'll get those going. And if that makes iron, oh, the other thing we need is flux. I haven't seen any flux. Have you guys seen flux? Andesite. What do we got? Cobalt. Andesite. What else we got? So we need flux and um, iron in order to make pig iron. And we need pig iron, iron, and flux to make steel. Um, so without flux, I'm kind of out of luck on some things. And Flux doesn't show up everywhere. Um, I don't think andesite is one of the ones that it shows up in. So we're going to have to find a level that's something other than andesite. And it looks like so far all I've had is andesite. I don't remember if this embark had something else. So we're going to just keep going down. And when we see a level that's something other than andesite, we're going to do some exploratory mining. Like this is this is obsidian everywhere. I don't see anything that's anything other than obsidian. I don't know if it's a pure obsidian level or if I can get something else out of it. Um, well, let's go down a level. What do we got? Obsidian again. Go down another level. Obsidian again. Go down another level. Still obsidian. I don't remember if obsidian, I don't think, I think it's sedimentary uh, layers, and I don't remember all the sedimentary stones off the top of my head. What you could do, what I would recommend, is is go to the wiki, it's what I always have to do, um, and you look through, uh, just look, type in like flux stones or something like that, and it'll tell you all the layers that flux stones can show up in, and you need the flux in order to, to get to steel, so it's it's really important for making that. Lots of fighting. Why have we got so many fighting? Alright, hold on a second. Do I got like birds in my fortress or something? Giant crow blood. So they must have flown in, but how did they get past the dwarves? 
is there some entrance somewhere that I don't know about? <laughs> some dwarves died out here. I don't know what they were doing out there, but they're dead out there. Oh, and it means that if they're dead out there, we got some dwarves stuck in trees. They're probably going to die. Oh my goodness, you dwarves are just so dumb. What are you doing out there? Okay, um, hold on. Dumb dwarf stuck in trees. Okay, um, let's, oh my goodness, that means I'm going to have to come out here and deal with the wildlife or just let them die. Kind of leaning towards the let them die, but then they're still going to want to come up here and get it. Alright, here's what we're going to do. You dumb dwarf stuck in trees. So I'm going to get you out of the trees. It's not pretty, but it's your fault for doing this stupid shit. Alright. Sometimes, dumb dwarves do dumb dwarf things. I don't know if you knew that yet. I'm guessing that you do. Okay, we're going to make a couple more temples. Rash was one of the ones we were looking for to see if they were... Um, it's going to show up yellow for me here. So I'm curious. Accept that. Assign it. A new temple. No, Rash is blue. I don't know then. Alright, Cadet the Singe Battles. I don't think we have that one yet. That one's got 48. Um, 39 for this guy. The dead. Yeah, let's start worshipping the dead. Death. Yeah. I think that one's. I think that's a good one for this, for this uh, fortress. We'll pick that one and uh, one more. We'll assign to. Who else we got? Maybe these are just ones that are. I'm not sure. Worship learning. Hmm. Oh, these must be ones that are already done. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure out what that what those yellow ones are. Alright, and we're gonna do Sidet over here. Alright, so we got a couple more temples and we'll go ahead and smooth out these couple more temples as well. Increase the value a little bit. All right, uh, we're gonna need some more of these going because some dwarves are stuck in trees, and that's gonna get them killed. I really don't understand why they were even out there. There's no reason for them to be out there. I actually don't know if I have anyone that can cut them down. I'm gonna have to go check. Uh, to see if I have enough people on the the, the wood cut in job to make sure that I've got I'm relatively sure that someone's available to go cut them down all right we got 300 drinks that's pretty good I think since I'm starting to get uh, fluctuate up to some pretty high numbers for the amount of dwarves I want to up my the very least my drinks I got so much food but at least my drinks I'm gonna get it a little bit higher so got a couple of drink thins somewhere in here brew drinks uh, less than 150 I'm gonna put that up to 250 and brew drinks uh, 250 all right All right, so goblins, let's go to my barracks. So I'm going to train up my um, my Warhammer squad over here. And first, I'm going to take a look and make sure that so that squad's full. Oops, that squad needs one person. Uh, we're going to go to the bottom of the list here. Uh, this guy. All right, back to squads. Let's see how my archers are doing. They're doing good, so I only had I only had the one. 
All right, so I'm going to install a cage. Cage, uh, select the material. That's fine. Put it here in the middle. And now let me go find a goblin. All right, so here's a goblin in a cage. There we go. So now a goblin in a cage is going to be installed here. And then I should be able to select this squad and tell him to kill said goblin. And then I should be able to open the cage. Cheesemaker found dead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to go check the laborers and make sure there's enough woodcutters. Uh, I only got one that's not a military person. So let me uh, assign some more people. So potash maker, animal caretaker, and mechanic. You guys can all be woodcutters as well. Go make sure those trees are cut down. All right. Let me get another layer of being cut, uh, chopped down into the ground and then come back up to that cage. It's not going to do anything while I'm away because it, although it installs the cage, it's not going to let him out of the cage until I go. That's a, a separate command you do afterwards. Still getting a lot of obsidian. All right, so you can see that node was, was mined out pretty well. And we'll do one more. All right, what do we got now? Orthoclase. I believe that might be a Gabbro or Orthoclase. I don't remember that one that one might actually be one that has a flux um, here let's go to if I come into here oh. all right custom on the stone uh, economic all right so these are either, these are all the economic stones. A lot of them are economic for different reasons, like a coal is a fuel, um, the calcite, the chalk, the dolomite, these things, uh, you're looking at the limestone, the marble, um, those are fluxes. Lignite's also a fuel. Um, gypsum is making your, your uh, cast and that kind of stuff. I don't remember if these two are flux. But I didn't see any of these. Usually you find levels of, the most common ones I see is marble, dolomite, and chalk. Uh, but some of the other ones show up every now and then too. I just wanted to kind of refresh uh, my mind on the, the flux stones so I know what I'm looking for. So both both the, um, the ortho class and the cab row doesn't help. But I don't remember if it's a sedimentary, sedimentary level layer or not. Uh, if it is, then we might be able to find, even though it's not one of these two, it might be somewhere else on this level. All right. That's good for now. I should have the cage done, so we're going to come back up uh, to the... Yes, so we have a goblin in a cage here. So if I come, I'm going to pause it for a sec. If we come select this and attack that I select this goblin confirm kill that goblin now I don't believe that they'll attack I'm gonna unpause it for a sec they should just swarm around it yeah so they're just swarming around it and then if I just click on it I believe there's a button to release it is it just this button Click a creature to assign to it, and I just take it out. So I think I just do that, and I think that releases it. So let's do this and start it up. And I believe that a civilian is going to come and take it somewhere. Let's give it a second C. If not, uh, there's one other thing I can do, because it counts as a caged creature. So what I can do is is kind of drag it somewhere with a civilian, 
And so it might be since it's got nowhere to go, no way's going to come do it. So what I can do is I can make this little zone and do like a pen pasture, uh, say like right there, we'll do a one, we'll do accept. And this goblin was snag uh, rar. All right, so if I go to this pasture and add, I do snag. Where are you, snag? Snag rar. So if I do that, now I believe that'll trigger a civilian to come pull him from here to there. But as soon as the civilian takes him out of the cage, these guys should mob him. We'll see if that works as I remember. It gives me some nice Warhammer training. Come on, civilians. You got this. Got to show all my friends a good time. All right. We only got nine here. What are where the other guy is? And why are you not coming? Tasks. release all right we're so we got somebody doing it he's just taking his time and getting here i guess all right there you go we, we grout him out uh i don't know what happened all right i guess snag i guess snag is dead but that wasn't a very good spot he died right there. All right, so let me go down to snag. Goblin snag is fighting. So he got he got beat to death, but that wasn't a very good spot to put him. So let's go ahead and select this pasture. So it worked, but I think I can do better. So I think what I'm going to do is come down here, mine out, let's say three here, three here, and that. And I'll just make this somewhere where I can come and uh, put goblins. All right. So get rid of that. And let's install some cages. All right, cage, keep building, select material. All right. We got some more goblins. Yep, goblin. Uh, goblin. Goblin. I think we have five more of these things. And unfortunately, I... Goblin, I think one more. I think this is the last one. Goblin. I'm just going to double check. No goblin, no goblin. All right, so we've got five more goblins getting caged. We'll go ahead and make a pasture down here to, to put them in. And that should be good to go. I'll probably tell... Yeah, I'll probably just tell the Warhammer squad to, to kill them. I don't know what they're doing. Constant training. A couple dwarven children found dead. Oh, did I ever cut down those trees on top? in the trees, but the trees are not cut down yet. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, a couple of stray dogs. Let's go ahead and train those up. Oh, pet livestock. Get a couple more war dogs. And we'll go and dig some more levels of into the ground because I really want to get to a cavern today too. All right, what do we got? We got Gabbro, just Gabbro on this level. 
All right. Go down a layer and keep digging. Did I get it right? Yeah, I got it right. And on this level, we'll do a little bit of exploratory mining. Just because I'm not positive that there's, it's not a flux layer. I don't remember which ones are which. So we'll do a little bit of that. Um, I'm doing it on the previous level, so I probably don't need to do it here. And I want to go up to my workshops real quick and see if I got some of that smelting of iron done. If so, I should have some iron bars here. Oops. Silver and copper bars. We got, we do got some iron bars in here. Okay. So what we don't have though is flux. And I don't think did I make the steel. Uh, no. Okay. So as I talked about a couple times, there's two things you need. You need to make pig iron bars, and then you're going to need to make steel bars. So the pig iron, uh, you need iron bars, flux stones, and coal. Um, so on all these, I'm going to bring it down to five, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Come back out and make the pig iron down to five as well. And then steel. So steel. Make, make, make. Make is F. M is after F. Make steel bars. Bring that down to five. And for those, we're going to want iron bars, pig iron bars, flux stones, refined coal. Now you actually need the double refined coal, so I'm going to leave that at 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it, it basically it double looks for 10 on here because it, it starts with a baseline 10. So I'm just going to, I don't know why it does that instead of just doing a 20, but it's, it's kind of just some baseline coded in the game is every resource it just multiplies that times the, the base 10 and puts a line in there for it. So, uh, again, if I got enough of everything else, I'm going to make the steel bars. All right. Um, I might get some this. Uh, as, I, as I broke this apart into different places, I might do one just for steel bars in here. I'm also expect, I thinking I might want to do one for flux, um, but I want to kind of see what flux I get as well before I do too much of that. All right, so that hasn't started yet, so I'm, I think I probably installed some more cages. Yep, so let's go ahead and get some dwarves killing. All right, dwarf, kill. All the goblins. Confirm. Kill all those goblins. Alright, and then we're going to make a pen right here. There we go. And let's go ahead and give one, two, three, four, five. We'll, we'll do uh, two goblins for now. Do two goblins at a time. <clears throat> All right, how's my frames for a second? 30, that's pretty good. So one thing that I haven't started doing is um, finding a way to destroy items. There's another, I, I use a couple of exploits, like I, I farm up um, bars so that I just mass produce them by melting down things like leggings and battle axes and then reforging them. That actually produces... It's a net positive gain in metal. Uh, the other thing I do is I use quantum stockpiles. Um, that actually helps with frames per second and just cleans up some stuff. The other thing that you can do uh, that's an exploit is called a Dwarven Atom Smasher. So you basically you take a bridge um, 
and kind of put it over just an open area. So if I put a bridge here uh, that's maybe too wide, and I put a dump zone right underneath it, and I, I raise the bridge up, and I dump a bunch of stuff there, and then I slam the bridge down on top of it, it'll, it'll smash all the items there and destroy them. So it's a way you can get rid of items is by smashing a bridge down on top of a dump zone. Um, it's a bit of an exploit um, because you're not really, it's not really how the physics of how stuff works. Um, what I prefer to do is just dig until I get to the, the magma sea. So down low levels, uh, you'll eventually get to this big sea of, of lava. And you use that for uh, two things. So it's, it's good because it allows you to save a lot of fuel. Um, when you're doing smelting and smithing operations. So I'll basically relocate all my smithing operations down by the magma sea. I'll put a, um, a metalwork in and smithy right above it. Um, and two, it allows you to make a dump zone just right over a, a lava pit. And you can actually then, you know, dig a column all the way up to where, wherever your fort is and, and, and pit uh, into there. You can also get you know, pumps that are magma safe and pump the magma all the way up from the magma sea up to where your fort is if you don't want to go down to it. I prefer just building down by the magma sea, but you can do it either way. I don't know why it takes so long for people to come take these goblins out. You have discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. All right. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the combat. I'm pretty sure those, those dwarves can handle two defenseless goblins. Let's go show you what a cavern looks like. All right, so, ooh, let's, let's get rid of all of this. Stop digging. Stop digging. All right, so I dug and broke into a, breached a cavern here. So breaching a cavern is going to do a few things. Um, that's fine right there. So first of all, it explores a whole bunch. You can see a certain number of spaces just from where you breached. So you see I was, I was digging and I breached it right here. Uh, you can actually see that I could have breached it all the way up to, to this level, possibly higher. You can also see the kind of to the limits, it just kind of stops here, but you see how there's, there's not, like you can tell that this is obsidian and then here I don't know what it is. It's because this is actually just more open cavern and this is kind of just like, the, the end of my dwarf sense of, of where stuff is. So let me go back down to this level. So it kind of it kind of auto explores. Now if I want, I can find a way to to get all the way over like and I breach it here, I'd be able to see some more stuff. Um, you can also see these little shapes here. These are the new trees that I can go and get. So if I scroll down, this is kind of the base of a tree that I can chop. Um, and I am going to want to chop some of this, some of this area. It's nice finding more open cavern areas like this. This might be perfect, uh, but it's in water. That makes it kind of annoying. So it's seven, seven water that they're all in. But I have this spot right here that's kind of open. The oh, well, these are this area is actually kind of nice right in through here. So the, the difficulty with the caverns is that it's another source for enemies to show up. Um, it also is a path and nightmare, and so my frames per second are going to drop a lot. I've got it paused right now, which is why you show high frames per second, uh, because I, I kind of want to come in here and plan for a little bit. The thing I'm currently looking for is how I'm going to get a place to be chopping trees. And I kind of like this little area I'm looking at right here. So what I'm probably going to do is find a way to build some walls and close this whole place off so that I, there's not people that can, that can get to me. So I'm just going through the, the, the different layers and taking a look. So what I think I'm going to do is right through this area is kind of seal off a lot of stuff here. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, well, I don't know that I can reach this easily. So I came in at which layer? Where am I? This layer. All right, so I came in at this layer. It's kind of way up there. I actually want to be more like 
on this layer down here is where I would want to breach. Okay, so what I'm going to do is up here where I breached it, I'm going to actually get my this, forbid, forbid those couple of things, get my construct, build a wall, select the material, build a wall right here of uh, ortho place with, is, is within six. Yeah, I'll just take this ortho and put it right there. All right, so that should then seal up the cavern for a second for me. Um, so someone's going to come pick up this rock, put it right there, and that seals the cavern. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here and come over to where I liked, like right here at this level. So I want to get over right here. So from this level, start a hallway. What alert do I got? Dwarven children are dead. Yeah, I know. All right. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, actually, I don't need it so far. All right, so we'll go to there. So from here, I'm gonna just kind of ramp down pretty quickly to get to that. I don't, actually, I'm, I'm gonna have to back it off even farther than that. Uh, we'll go like that. And then I'm gonna breach into the cavern from there. All right, and we all right. We finished that wall. All right, so the cavern is technically closed back up off to us again, which is good. Expansive cavern. Uh, other things with caverns. So you can get invasions through the caverns. Um, so like a bunch of troglodytes or something could show up and be on the edge of the cavern map. You can have underground water sources. You can, you saw when I when I came and looked up here that I've got this this water and it's not even I don't think it's even stagnant water. Yeah, so it's not even stagnant water. So I could drop like uh, a well onto here. I can come fish it. Um, there could be all kinds of new animals that are pathing around down here. If I go to others, anything showing up? Got some wolverines. Oh, a caged wolverine. <laughs> Punk. I can actually, since I got some caged wolverines, I can actually train these things. Maybe I want to start training some wolverines to be on my. I'll think about it. Uh, but I could get. Oh, it looks like three of those, two of those goblins did get killed. How's my, how's my squad doing? Everyone still alive? Kill goblins. Yeah. I will. I'm gonna go ahead and tell the other other three goblins to, to come get pit in here. I mean, placed in here. All right, place. Goblin, goblin, goblin. There we go. Uh, what else is with caverns? You could have uh, the other thing that, that comes into caverns is these legendary beasts, which the beasts themselves, like everything you've seen so far, um, although they're semi-procedurally generated, they're, there's, there's known qualities that is a goblin. There's known qualities that is a dwarf, all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's certain things about them. Now, they might have some little nuances to them, but, you know, like a dwarf has two arms, two legs, unless he's got a nasty injury, uh, a beard, you know, they go into martial trances when they get really good at fighting, that kind of stuff. Uh, forgotten beasts are these large, procedurally generated, or usually large, creatures that could be of, like, any type of material. Like, you could, they have all kinds of physiology, they can have all sorts of different limbs, they can fly, they can breathe stuff at you, they can have diseases, they can have, 
uh, their their blood could 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 be poison like uh, out of aliens it could be an acid they could be so hot they they burn stuff around them they could be so cold that they freeze dwarves uh, so it's just they're crazy creatures that you have no idea what they're going to be and how tough they're going to be uh, sometimes that means that they're near indestructible and um, very painful to deal with sometimes that means that uh, a dwarf will come up and hit them once and they just shatter so you don't really know how difficult they're going to be and it kind of makes it fun because of that so i'm digging down right now to get into the side of the cavern where i want kind of this floor. This is the floor I'm coming to. And again, I'm using the same method of keeping it three wide because I'm not positive yet if I need it. And I'll probably dig this way to go down, but then I'm going to have the path come over here. I'm going to be just sealing this off, but okay, so while I'm doing this, as soon as I breach into here, I think what I'm going to do is bring a squad, my, my tough squad down here and just kind of guard this area while I'm doing some work in here. Down to 80 pop. Man, I had so many people trapped outside. Why are you guys out here fighting so much? I'm hoping eventually all the dwarves either ghost or get found or some combination of both. Like these, I think, are people I'm going to have to, because I think I removed, yeah, I removed the ability to get all the way up there to them. I'm not going to add any more of those because you already can't get there. Uh, and it wouldn't even matter if you climbed up anyway, so I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to have to be making some slabs, I think, because I think I'm going to start getting some ghosts. Uh, that's just how it is, Axe Lord. So if I come over to my dead and missing, this thing is getting, getting full. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, uh, we'll trade some more value away and everyone will still love us. Right? Right. All right, let's build some more. Actually, we don't need it. We're down to 80 pop and we can already go up to 100. We're not going to bother. If I do that, then what's going to happen is it's going to make it so that um, more jobs start being made. I just don't want to do that yet. I'm going to go ahead and toss some restricted on here. I don't need this area for a while. That's easy to come back and change later, so that's why I did it that way. I still got a lot of dwarf coffins here. I need to keep making coffins though because there's been a lot of dwarves killed. I'm probably going to leave some room for some slabs right here because I'm thinking that I might get some ghosts. <sighs> Them's the breaks. Alright, so I'm going to type. Let's go ahead and do some auto on them. Now that I have this out, I can actually, what's nice is once you've got this layer, you can you can search the walls 
on multiple levels really quick once you get the caverns as well, which is nice. So I can kind of look around and see if there's a if there's a layer that's helpful. Cabro, Cabro, Orthoclase. Looks like this. I'm just getting a whole bunch of this Gabro Orthoclase stuff. It's not very helpful. All right, so this is open. I'm gonna go ahead and get my get my squad down here. You guys go station right here, and let's start building some walls. Um, what do I want to do? I think what I want to do is cause it's gonna be taking stuff. I guess it's not that far away. All right, construct some walls, uh, select the material. So I think right across here, I'll put a wall, and some andesite blocks. And then, where do I want to do it here? I think like... right now and then I'm going to want to build some floor right there and then some wall Come back and put walls here, and then put a wall. Actually, I can put a wall right here or there. Actually, uh, we'll start there. All right, now on this side. Now the other tricky part on this is some of these are going to be multiple Z levels high. So although I'm putting a wall right there everywhere that you see, and some of it's not even done yet because I'm putting some floors here, so then i got to come back later and put a wall that I think I'm going to do something like this shape. Um, the next layer up also has stuff I have to do, and I actually am going to have to get rid of some of this. Like This mushroom right here needs to go away. Because it's in my way for building stuff, and this one needs to go away. Because it's in my way. Let's see, are any of these ones in my way? Yeah, so this one's in my way. And there we go. So, I mean, I'm up. This is three levels up, four levels up, five levels up, six. So it's, it's going to be pretty high that I have to go up here. Now, when I get to the top level... And I put the, the wall across there, and then I'll be good to go. So I'm going to have to build basically some scaffold in to, to get up uh, some of this stuff in order to build it. And that's just, that's just how that is done. But eventually I'll get this sealed off, and that'll actually help with the frames per second as well, because it'll, it'll be sealed off again, but then I got this area that is kind of my, my area that is cavern. And what I could do is, well, no, I'll just, I'll just leave it like that. Also, breaching the cavern, what it did is it made, 
the rest of my fortress start to get plants everywhere that wasn't a stone floor. So if I come here, you can see I got this, this cave moss growing in all my sandy areas. So what that is going to allow me to do is I'm actually going to be able to pull, once this gets full enough, I'm going to be able to pull my geese in here. Um, and that should be that should be helpful as well. Actually, all of all of my animals, I can do that. So I can actually do that right now. So I'll put pen pasture here, accept, and add. Let's see, what do I got? Oh, I'm saving. So different animals require different amounts of training. It talked about that giant wolverine I'd have to train. There's some animals that you have to train constantly to keep them docile. Some you can just train a few times. And also as you train, your dwarves get better knowledge about training. So future uh, species that you make of that will be faster to train. I mean, I'm good, doing good on drinks and food. Um, and I... So if you if you get like a breed and pair of something nasty, like people like to train dragons or alligators or giant elephants or something like that, um, and you get a breed and pair and you can train them for war, you can get some very deadly animals um, to to help you defend your fortress. And some people really like doing that kind of stuff. I don't really dive too deep into the training of animals. I just I prefer fighting with dwarves. I like making deadly deadly dwarf. Um, squads and and fighting with them so it but it's definitely a game of to each their own and you can do whatever it is that you enjoy all right so i'm bringing all my animals inside here there we go and i'll actually build some nest boxes in here as well So, get rid of these. I actually don't know if I've, if they've been laying. Let me see if my stocks, eggs, do I, do I got, I got, still got lots of duck eggs. And I'm getting goose eggs. So yeah, I am getting goose eggs. I've got plenty of duck eggs. Marshall Trance. All right, there's uh, still a goblin here. Do I still have a job to go burn that goblin? Task. All right. Strange mood. Uh, make wooden cage, load cage trap. Sure, let me, let me go check this out. So, uh, yeah, I still have the... At some point, they'll come and put him in the cage. Oh, uh, let me see, actually, if it got suspended. Any suspended jobs? No. All right. Let's go back down. All right. The other thing I can do now that I have this is um, this creates really good farming area, but it's kind of far away for me to actually use it for farming right now, so I'm probably not going to bother. Uh, Brewers found dead. Yeah. How am I doing on wood? I'm probably completely out of wood. Yeah, pretty much nothing. And that's mostly due to the fact that I ran out of stuff on the surface. So I'm going to actually just chop all of these down. And that's fine to do. They will regrow in this area because it's, it's plenty high enough. And it'll be another source. Swords Dwarf found dead dehydrated. Come on, Swords Dwarf. What are you doing? Is that one of my... Yeah, one of my guys here died. 
What are you doing? Animal trainer. Petition. Eradicated monsters wishes to reside. That's nah. Ooh, down to sixty-three pop. Man, I am blowing through my people. Uh, I don't know if I need to come out here. I think what's happening is people are just dying up here <sighs> trying to recover I think I'm getting into this loop of them trying to recover stuff out here and it's not going well so Let's see if I can limit that a little bit so I'll forbid some of this stuff it's got these like agitated animals right here that I think everyone's just kind of running into means got my kill squad why are you not kill squad oh it's a corpse um, let me look at other animals Oh, undead. Well, that's fun. Is there a necromancer around? So I might have had a necromancer come because I have undead. That's fun. Or they're just pathing in and it's getting even deadlier here. That could be the case. Uh, it could be just getting uglier and uglier in my fortress here. That's okay. You know, not all fortresses are made to last forever. We'll see how this one's going. It's going well, right? You all think so. Kill goblins. Oh, that's right. They're stationed way down south. Uh, okay, that's fine. So this is going to be pretty slow for doing all of this. <laughs> A lot of dead dwarves. Oh. Alright, I'm going to need to take a risk, let you go back up, because there's just a lot of violence going up there, and I need to keep people from getting into my fortress. Like down to 60 pop. I probably have a hospital that's, I don't know, it seems like all my doors are just dying outside. There might be nobody in my hospital. Yeah, virtually nobody in my hospital. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to need to build myself a bunch of slabs. So this is pretty um, pretty crazy as far as um, dealing with the wildlife. I mean, that's just been a constant fight. And then coming inside hasn't seemed to help. It seems like it's deadlier now because for whatever reason, I got into this kill loop of people going outside to go help out. And then... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I lost a lot of people out here. And now I've got undead wandering around. Uh, what do we 
got here? A giant wolverine in a cage. And hmm. got some dead dwarves there. Oh, we did get a farm plot. Poor soil. What's this one? Poor soil. You know, I don't know that it matters. Looks like a lot of mud versus little mud. It's both poor soil. So I guess that's good to know. All right, we breached the cavern. I'm losing dwarves faster than I'm gaining dwarves. You know what? Uh, it'll really help out the dwarves. They'll really love me for this. Let's go ahead and set up a justice system next. All right, so where should I put it? Uh, I guess on the barracks level, right off of here. Um, no, we're going to put it put it off of here. Oh, uh, yeah, right through this. So this hallway right here, turn into that. And I'm going to make some little jail cells. Boom. So with a justice system, what you're going to want to do is have jail cells available um, for you to store criminals. Um, the reason why you want this is because you don't want um, your hammerer to come and beat them all to death. Well, arguably you don't want that. Some people think that's perfectly fine. When you're hemorrhaging in population like I am, you probably don't want that happening. Now, the justice system, although it can be harsh, actually makes your dwarves all overall happier because they they see justice being done, and that makes that makes dwarves happy when, when justice is is done, when justice is served. So it's it's good to have a justice system. So what you're going to do be doing is um, build in restraints in the middle of these cells, um, and that's going to basically turn them into the ability to make a cell. Uh, you can also put locked doors and stuff. I just bother with that. I'm also going to put some some beds in here so that they can they can rest. Um, and then other people are going to have to take them food and water. So that's just one of the things is is feeding uh, the prisoners is is a task that your your population is going to have to do. Um, so that's why I put it near here as well sometimes, uh, just so that it's near where dwarves like to go to, to feed themselves. They can also go and take care of your your prisoners along with the, the people in the hospital. Um, there's two things you need to create the justice system beyond just the cells. You need the hammer to dish out punishments and you actually need to train or assign a noble, uh, either the sheriff uh, before you have a mayor or once you have a mayor it becomes like a captain of the guard. So the captain of the guard will be the it's kind of like the, the chief of police is, is who they are. And um, so then that person will go and investigate crimes that happen. Um, so you'll be able to, to see that a crime was committed. You'll go and um, talk to witnesses. You'll eventually try to find to get a dwarf to confess to it. Once a dwarf confesses, you'll you know convict uh, the person who confessed. And you can actually, I think you can convict even without them confessing, if you get enough witnesses and you're pretty sure, or you want to convict someone, uh, the dwarves almost don't care whether or not you convicted correctly. They just want a conviction for the most part to make them happy. Um, so the conviction is, is almost more important. Keep that in mind. All right, so I've got some jail sales going in. I'm going to come to the noble, I'm going to put in a captain of the guard, and I'm going to make my captain of the guard, uh, let's see, I've got no relevant skills on anyone. Alright, so, Nish the mechanic, sure, Nish the mechanic is my captain of the guard and my where is it hammer is gonna be a hammer dwarf atis congratulations 
All right. No study. Oh, we got Cog. Cog Musar got elected mayor at some point. Let me go change over the rooms. All right. All right, so this bedroom assigned to Cog, the mayor. There we go. This one assigned to Cog, the mayor. There we go. And this one assigned to Cog, the mayor. All right. Noble screen. It still needs to be improved. Oh, and he needs a tomb. All right, we give you Cog the mayor a tomb. Wants his own little tomb. Uh, why not? Elven caravan. All right. Uh, they might have some good supplies. I don't know that they're going to survive making it here. But we'll pull the lever and allow them access. And I don't need to... Oh, I don't have a broker. <laughs> My broker probably died. All right, Cog the mayor, you can you can be my broker. Uh, broker requested depot. All right. Okay, so they're probably going to go through the traps to get to me because they can, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Hopefully I get this pull to save them some time. <laughs> but they're actually, because they don't have any um, wagons, they're actually going to be able to make it like that. That's funny. I guess since they can make it like that, let's go ahead and get rid of pull the lever. Just have them walk the long way. Let's check all the way down, see how my walls are coming. Still got a lot of those to go. Whew. Frames per second down to 26, 27 not great but part of that is because those caverns aren't sealed off yet uh, so my asthma starting up of course got a worshiping mayor he'll get up here and I'll steal all of the elven stuff at some point uh, just things going bad in my entrance way Down to 54 pop. Ugh. I might just seal off the top and stop trading at all and just completely seal my fortress. I can't get any migrants that way either. And I can't get myself to trade more. But it will allow me to possibly stop the bleeding on this. Because I got 54 pop. And you know what? My bark dwarves are worthless. We're going to give some civilians back. Alright. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, 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 I just killed two squads. <sighs> oh, 
I don't know. I don't know what happened there. They're fine. They're missing a person, but they're fine. person here. Trade at depot. Trade. Mark all. Seize. Go away. Alright. No trader requested. Petition. Eradicate monsters? Sure. I need, I need help. Kill monsters for me. There's a dead person. <laughs> Got dead people all over the place. Alright. Masterpiece. I haven't seen any uh, ghost messages yet, but it doesn't mean that we don't have any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my workshop level and just see if I possibly have some ghost. Grave memorial slab. So what I could do is start memorializing people, but I'm not seeing any ghosts. I could just do it as they pop up to ghost. Or I could just memorialize people who are not entombed. That's just a lot of people. I think I'm going to do it as they turn into ghosts. Some migrants arrived, despite the danger. <laughs> Congratulations. Pop's going back up again. For a little bit. I think I'm going to have to decide what I want to do with this. I'm not sure. Alright, uh, those are going good. Do I have... Oh yeah, I needed to make some more quarters for the captain of the guard. So I've got one set here. I'm going to make another set uh, right here. So we'll do that. That, that. Back up to 76 pop. There we go. Dwarves are happy to come to cage boot and die. Oh, there we go. Ghost. Go ahead and memorialize the first one. Alright. I wish there was a filter for... Oh, let me see if there is. Ghost. No. Ghost. Here we go. gem cutter still we still have a gem cutter seems to be still alive excellent all 
How are we doing on fisher dwarves? We got some. That's good. We got some woodcutters. We got some miners. Let's go ahead and do that. I wonder if they're just fighting each other. Skeletons. Oh my goodness. So we just have this skeletal bird that just seems to be just killing everyone. Three undead, two of them flying. Oh, agitated giant copperhead. That doesn't sound helpful at all right there. I'm not liking this. Not liking this. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is consider how I'm going to solve this issue. I don't I don't like either option. I don't like trying to make it peaceful up top seems fighting these this wildlife has gotten too difficult and I don't like the idea of completely sealing myself off either but I think the sealing myself off is gonna have to be the way that I try to survive it unfortunately but I'm gonna go ahead and call it here for the night hopefully we can get these jail cells built um, can I even look at the justice menu right now? No open cases, closed cases, cold cases. Oh, we convicted someone. Okay. Um, no sentence pending. All right. Um, Yeah, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. We're going to have to figure out securing the, the caverns next time. We're going to have to finish building the, the quarters here for our brand new, uh, what's it called, Captain of the Guard. Yep, Captain of the Guard. We're going to see if we can get that tomb for the mayor and upgrade his rooms, make him happy. Oh, we got the, get that going right now, actually. Furniture, burial, yeah, use close, this is fine. Got a tomb in there. Tomb. Accept and assign to the mayor. There you go, mayor. We got you a tomb. We'll get a coffin in there right away. Uh, he wants it at a grave level. Sure. Uh, I don't know how much value it's going to take to get there. We'll see what we can do. Uh, I do not have enough. Do not have enough coffins, or slabs, or any of that. Maybe eventually we'll memorialize all these dwarves. Maybe eventually we'll find a way to to safe this up. But we've got we've got some work cut out for us for next time. So thanks for coming. Uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good night.